Hi, this is Margaret Bird. Welcome to Color Quest. And welcome to a rainbow of natural color. For the past three months, we have been going through various kinds of natural color in order to create a rainbow. And guess what? We did it. So today I'd like to look at the result of those three months of hard work and marvel at the beauty that we created with color exclusively from nature. So if you go back to the very first videos here at Color Quest back in October and November of 2020, almost three years ago, you will notice that the first set of videos that I worked on, I actually was looking for the rainbow. At the time, however, I was sticking to colors that I could find in my kitchen. One of the things about working with natural color is it is a vast world and a great place to start is just in your kitchen. So I wanted to make these videos that would allow people to feel comfortable knowing that it could be as simple as grabbing things in the fridge or up in the cupboard in order to start the journey into natural color. Now, I did make a rainbow and the colors were pretty good. But many of those colors are what's known as fugitive, meaning that over time, and sometimes quickly, they will fade. And they may not be the best choices if you're looking for natural color that will stick around a little bit longer. Now you can always help and should always help your fiber to a mordant bath and a good cleaning in order to help with natural color to adhere better to fibers. But there are also dyes that are just known as being more fast, and that means color fast, light fast, and wash fast. And that's what we did over the past three months. So I wanted to show you the beautiful rainbow palette that we actually created. It's pretty remarkable. We started our journey with Weld so many weeks ago. And from Weld, we worked on making other colors using Weld as the under dyed piece and over dyeing with various things. For example, we mixed it with logwood and we were able to get two different shades of beautiful green. We also worked with indigo, both in an over dye and an under dye, and we were able to get all of these different shades of green. Pretty remarkable. This actually was indigo over dyed on weld. And we also got a beautiful olive color using iron to shift weld. Now, we move over here into the warm tones we also worked with Matter over Weld to get these two beautiful orange colors, very different, just based on how long you left the dye in. And we also welcomed orange with Cochineal. That was something we did just a few weeks ago. Now Cochineal brought us about all of these cool, colors over here. And when I mean cool, I mean the purples, fuchsias, and magenta colors. It also brought us this really awesome, vibrant orange. It also brought about this really deep scarlet red. Of course, Cochineal, on its own, lives in this very vibrant pink realm but we were able to move it into all of these different variations of pinks, purples, and lilacs. Of 
course, we also looked at indigo. We did not work with a vat indigo on this journey. We actually worked with a Japanese indigo called Aijizom, which is water soluble. So it makes it super easy to work with. But you can imagine if we had a vat, we would get some really dark blues. However, take a look at that. I mean, that is an incredible array of rainbow colors. Now, working with dyes like cochineal and weld and indigo matter as well, these are traditional dyes and they have been used for centuries. And the reason for that is because they have such good staying power. Now, I often get asked, is this color permanent? How can I make this permanent? And I personally don't worry about that. However, if you work with these dye sources, you're going to extend the life of your natural color and maybe it can be passed down from generation to generation. A lot of it depends on how you care for your fibers as well. Now, these dyes that were used centuries ago did not have modern technology like washing machines and dryers and non-organic soap products. So it's very likely that dyes from a previous time were better cared for. So think about that when you're working with natural color and maybe treat your dyed fibers a little more gently. And one final note or comment I wanted to share with you is that it is very easy to forget these combinations of colors that you've used. So make sure that you're taking notes and you're labeling your fiber samples if you want to try to recreate similar colors in the future. Just in making that beautiful rainbow display for you, I already got confused and I am really not very good at labeling things. So I can tell you, you think you're gonna remember and then you won't. So make sure to keep track of what you're doing. And although you may not get the same colors again, at least you have an idea of things that you've tried and hopefully that will spur some additional experiments and exploration for you to try different combinations and continue to widen that palette. Oh yeah, and if you know me, you know that green is always elusive. And in this journey we've just made together, I made so many different greens. So it's possible you just might have to get creative in your dye studio. All right, friends, it has been a long series of videos all regarding time in the studio and mixing and matching different dye matters. It's time for us to travel. I am ready to get on the road and do a little foraging and seeing what kind of magical natural colors may come to me as I'm on the road. So, I'm not gonna tell you where, but join me next week as we get on a plane and start our summer months with some good natural color foraging and travel to other regions to see what kinds of natural colors we can find. Have a great week and I will see you next Friday as well as this deeper orange. Now, it also brought about this awesome, where is the, 